Swing it is sorty. Let's get that booty. What's good, y'all? What's happening? How y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of the Slim Cogcast. It is I, Slim Cognito, and uh, let me tell y'all something, bro. First and foremost, and certainly the one with the most, I gotta address this first off at the top of the podcast because it needs to be said. All right, when it comes to the weekly news, all right, I try to find what I can and come across what I can. <clears throat> and honestly, the last bit of like actual video game shaking news was last week on the last day of the podcast like literally last monday everything was starting to happen and then a few things on tuesday but as of right now monday on this day in march 7th 2022 i gotta tell you first things first we have a issue here um the video game industry is kind of being affected by the war or i guess you could say the perceived or alleged war that's going on with Ukraine and I am not well versed into political things enough in order to comment on these things but I can educate myself and if I can come across the information and actually you know set the time aside to learn as much as I can then I will be able to parse exactly what it is that's happening over there to you all but I've been hearing some things on both sides and not enough clarity we have an overwhelming amount of people who've been taken to the social medias to try to show exactly what's going on but the thing about doing that is when you're scrolling social media you don't want to see all the negative all the time every day it it can be taxing especially for one who does something that has to keep a mental health at a certain level now that being said yo it's time for us to remind y'all and let y'all know that this thing <clears throat> ain't that small and it's affecting to the point where there are a lot of design uh not excuse me not design choices but there are a lot of uh, company made choices that are geared toward either adding to the relief or solutions to the problem or just them doing what they can in order to circumnavigate issues that could cause problems for their company for example, Nintendo eShop payments have been suspended in Russia. You have Activision Blizzard halting the sales of Overwatch and Call of Duty and World of Warcraft in Russia. You have, you know, uh, what was the developers of This War is Mine, 11-bit studios, have donated $700,000 to Ukraine. You have uh, CD Projekt Red stopping sales of Cyberpunk and The Witcher in Russia. You have John Romero releasing a new Doom 2 level to raise money for Ukraine. There's Stalker 2 development on hold because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We got Genshin Impact developed Mihoyo interested in nuclear fusion technology, which I don't really know why, but I feel like this is an opportunity that they could do so at the moment since they have the money, the capital, and not much pressure upon them. Ukrainian government calls for game companies to cut off Russia during invasion. The Cuphead, oh excuse me, not that, excuse me, that one. Uh, into, but I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all get the gist of it by now. EA Sports is removing Russian teams from FIFA 22. Like, it's a lot going on right now in terms of this here war. And hopefully that we end up on the right side of history of it. That's all I can say at the moment. So with that out of the way, I will send my condolences to those who are suffering from it and those who are innocent and, and, and being victims of the fallout or, or, you know, or the consequences of these other people's choices, whether it's Ukraine or not, either side of it. There are whenever there's a war, there are people on both sides that are losing. Really, everyone loses. And the only people that really win in war are those that are in business for war. So. Anywho, before we go any further, because anything beyond that will be a uh, supposition and conspiratorial talk. Right here, right now, let's just jump into what we've been watching. Now, I have not seen the latest Attack on Titan. I know I should, but I ended up busy yesterday and the episode became available pretty late. But I will check it out. I need to. But in other news, I have been watching the shit out of snowfall for these past two weeks and i've binged the entire show like one day at a time and about three episodes a day i've been binge watched the entire show in the past two weeks or so or maybe like three weeks and it's amazing i've been enjoying it all right and i know we've talked about it so much 
And if you want to hear some full in-depth discussions, there will be had in the stream. If you want to talk about some more, uh, you know, different things that's been going on. Um, honestly, the latest season, season five, is ongoing. And there's only three episodes out so far, I think. If I remember right, I can't recall. But uh, it is still ongoing and it's still good. I'm witnessing a moment where you don't have to really how can I, how can I convince you? I see this show as like the Breaking Bad, but it's you know people of color in LA in the 80s, and it's cocaine instead of meth. But it is when I say so such a good roller coaster of a show and the cinematic choices that they make are great the characters have so much growth and development each one of those characters and now I, and i've been trying my best to get into the wire i've been really trying and i don't think it's a bad show but i just don't think it aged that well but i'm gonna give i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give it a chance i'm gonna try but it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy um if anybody's well versed into the show uh, let me know when does it really get rolling, cause I I, I would I, I feel like I owe it some due diligence. But anywho's, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> All right, so anywho's, here's the point that I'm getting at. Um, that show is like a nine out of ten for me through and through. I've been enjoying the hell out of it. I love Jerome, his uncle. I love Louis. Uh, I love Franklin, of course. Like, it's so many good characters. They all feel relatable. It's just that good because it hits closer to home. And honestly, y'all can't go wrong. So that's my that's my last recommendation for a while. We're just going to keep rocking with it. I'm going to keep watching it. We're going to see what's happening. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with Bel Air. Bel Air itself, though, uh, ain't trying to keep up with me. <laughs> so I'm trying to make sure that uh, I don't miss the next episode. That being said, I'm probably one episode behind or so. And I will catch up. But um, I, get, I did that whole preface at the beginning of the pod to say that uh, we don't have a lot of news this week. So let's get to talking some more about what we even played this week. All right, we're still working on Elden Ring. And I came across a boss at the, this like the southeast corner of the map. And like that whole area where it's all just red and stuff. And you get the blood rot uh, lake or whatever. And there's like a castle way over in the corner, like all the way at the bottom right of the map and in this castle you know once you finish exploring and whatnot there's a boss fight with a chimera like beast that wields a great sword and it's just swinging 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 and it's fast and it's a pretty good boss fight but not that hard but what makes it incredibly difficult is in the second phase of that fight suddenly you get this I forget the name of this knight. It's like a tower, not a tower knight, but it's like it's some type of knight. He swoops in out of nowhere, and it becomes incredibly difficult at that point. And I like that, but I just got to get myself geared up and leveled up to be able to deal with that, because <laughs> they tough. I'm not gonna lie to you, but uh, eventually I will be able to uh, make it work like it should. I've just found the Uchikage, thanks to uh, people in the chat, shout out to uh, those that's been helping, Midnight Vox, Tater Munger, etc. Um, we've been trying our best to get some gear and things like that, and it's bringing the community closer together where we can like, help one another with the game because of the things we found rather than the accomplishment that we've achieved. You know, we can do both now. Whereas in previous Souls games, you can only help one another based off of you being skilled enough to beat a certain boss so you get summoned for it or a certain area. But now you can help one another by saying, okay, I found this sword over here. Okay, I found this set of armor being sold by this merchant over here. And that makes it so much better for the community. It's, it's about designing a game around the fact that it has to be interacted with. And that just adds to it tenfold. It's more of a, it, it, you're making your game the mark of an era rather than just a game that was played in an era. And that's amazing, you know. They really did hit the nail on the head. There's some Witcher in here. There's some, 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 some Dragon's Dogma in there. But most of all, there's a whole lot of souls. And I love that. I love that. And I'll never do, I, I'm never, I, 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 ugh, it's so good. I keep going in between saying that this is the best Souls game or if this is 
like the best ones since my favorite but my favorites have always been demon souls and bloodborne and i really do love 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 dark souls one and dark souls 2 y'all know that's the outlier for me and a lot of other people and ds3 was a great time but bloodborne and demon souls just have the certain type of place in my heart that i can't let go anywho's y'all all of that being said souls games that are all time high and it's amazing and i love it and and this is a great game i'm having nothing but fun and i'm at anguish every weekend when I'm not streaming because I can't play it, but I want to play some more. But luckily, tomorrow Tuesday, baby. Anywho's, um, another game we playing, we've been playing is Summer, and I'm not gonna lie, bro. Me and my sleep deprived ass have been trying. But horror games sometimes they just don't have much in terms of like music and things to engage you with because they gotta like have you feel scared and alone. And this game does it in spades, and is really good at that. And when I'm paying attention, it's it's already got me on edge and I'm scared because even though I played it before, it's still scaring me. But it's been so long that, you know, some of the things are still fresh on me. And um, I got to say, this game is still amazing. It's so good. And there's things to come that's still going to blow y'all mind. So tune in for that. Also, oh. Get ready, because we got some other things lined up that y'all going to enjoy. Eventually, we're going to get back into the Resident Evils. Uh, right now, what's coming up next, we're going to be playing a Plague Tale Innocence once we finish Soma. And after Plague Tale Innocence, we're going to uh, start wrapping up some more Resident Evil titles, the ones that are outside of the mainstream uh, entries. And then, when we leave that, we're going to be playing... Well, yeah, cat out of the bag, I think I already told y'all, we working toward a Devil May Cry anthology, baby. And I can't wait. I, I can't wait. Honestly, I just might do this shit come my, uh, around my birthday month, honestly. Since that's like my favorite game series of all time. I gotta, 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 I gotta. Okay, but anyway. But yeah, that's what we've been playing this week. Uh, it's been going hella smooth, honestly. And we've been doing things here or there, but it's going great. Other good news. We now have a new... Pro yeah, we, we, we got some new things working through. And I can't believe it actually happened. I've been giddy all weekend because of it. So damn happy. And it's like this thing is gonna work out great. Like I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But it's it like the fact that we, I, <sighs> I'm still not used to it. I haven't really like grown to accept it just yet. But it, there's good things happening to me, and I'm not used to it. And I'm just thankful that it's happening. Like, y'all have no idea how thankful I am. So I just want to uh, express my thanks once again. And thanks to you all. We get to move up a bit. These things may seem small to y'all. Alright? They may seem simple to y'all. But it means the world to me. It means the world to me. Okay? Because of you guys, I was I had no plans. Of, I, Batman is my favorite superhero. And I had no plans to go see that movie. But I'm thinking about going to see it tomorrow. I'm thinking about going to see it tomorrow. And I could probably actually go do that now thanks to you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> Blessings. But anywho, uh, outside of all of that, outside of all of that, um, another thing that I've been uh, fooling around with in my off time, this time I chose to not make an AMV this weekend. I needed to actually relax and rest. I literally woke up. I did a little, you know, a few menial things, cooked a little food you know things like that for others and myself and i just relaxed for the entire fucking sunday it was a day of rest and it was good rest i am fully rested right now i feel great on this morning uh i just feel recovered no migraines no headaches from lack of sleep and sleep deprivation uh I, i'm good i'm hydrated i feel great and yesterday was even more amazing. Shout out to Miss Tiffany Chanel. Y'all check out her channel. It was a great time. I was up there laughing, having a good ass time, y'all. Um, not laughing at your misfortune, because I know you can do it and I can't wait. And good luck to you. I am sorry you had to go through that, but <laughs> you're not alone. Uh, also, shout outs to... We uh, said Tater Monger and uh, the rest of the crew, really, man. Like, just stop by. The community is a great set of people. Hell, sometimes I think they're better than me. But, um, all that being said, man, the only other thing that's on the agenda to really just been working on outside of, uh, in terms of playing something outside of, uh, 
the stream was just uh i usually unwound some apex and i've been working on this uh still working on a uh, portrait of ruin for the ds uh castlevania which i haven't finished just yet but uh it's coming along it's not that difficult just a bit and cumbersome not the most fun castlevania but it's there and anywho's um i'm probably um the reason i'm pacing myself is because i'm thinking of doing a castlevania run one of these days so it's not gonna be that hard so yeah y'all be sure to check your boy out make sure that you stop on by and i guess it's time for us to roll on in to the news because i want to talk more about you know the stuff i've watched and played but honestly there's just spoiler territory and i was convinced that jojo is back already it's back but not just yet the next part is coming in i don't remember when they said i think they said in like sometime march or may something like that but it's it's coming and i can't wait that's the that's the good part that's the best part and everybody's like anticipating it but it is coming trust me now aside from that let's jump on into the news y'all and the first thing on the docket is about twitch it says that a new report has claimed that several top twitch executives have left the company apparently in part due to a failure to understand twitch's culture and the craziest thing about twitch is that twitch has changed over the years you know surprisingly oh but um the original thing about twitch was that it was supposed to be a place for content creation for gamers and gamer kind and those who enjoy gamer made content you know what i mean and i hate to use the word gamers because it's become a different you know meaning and all that but uh the thing about it is twitch ain't what it used to be and but when you have a such brighter audience and a broad, broader uh you know broad audience and a broad demographic you end up with a situation where it's hard to please everybody because you can't tailor the changes to each one of their experiences and needs and wants so where you have a situation where you want to make things favorable for the gamers and the culture of gaming and nerd culture and you know cosplayers and those who are within the culture of you know the in that game geek culture you you can't really appeal to those that are outside of their culture and one thing that is outside of their culture are certain types of streams that have been very controversial on twitch since it has become a thing and the problem here we have is that that coach that new outside of the culture content makes twitch money but it's it's i won't say it's ruining i won't say it's affecting it either but it does it does have a an impact we can't say that we include something new in an, in an ecosystem and you know except expect it to not change the ecosystem in some way even on a micro level and one of the things that I worry about more than anything else with this inclusion, and the reason I'm speaking vaguely is because y'all know what it is. And if you want to know what I'm talking about in detail, then go on over to the stream that we had on Saturday night over on Twitch. And we talked about it ad nauseum. And the thing that worries me about it is one of the things that I've always been worried about is that if you were nerdy, then uh, you were a male nerd coming up. Okay, we were ostracized and, we, and, and, and there were a different place for them to build their own you know ecosystem and, and and community of people that can support one another who enjoy the things that they enjoy because they didn't really fit with the other crowds of people so instead of trying to sit at another person's table where you don't belong it's better to build your own and when the geek crowd built their own using the internet well that's where you know they found a community of people that they could you know vibe with and actually you know nurture them and help them grow and that's the key things people meet their best friends in communities where they belong people bond over fandom we bond over anime games etc tv shows all stuff like this so but when the when the image is i won't say muddled but you know altered slightly to where you know on that same platform there's temptation to not really pay much attention to that that is enough of an influence to where sometimes people get forgotten it's just like when you have a plain jane girl that's down to earth with good personality sometimes she's not noticed when there's others um aside from her that is you know more noticeable is if you got a guy who's you know got the personality and all of that they finish last whenever they're in competition with people who can finish sooner and better than them when it's like basically beauty 
Trump's personality in terms of acquiring attention. You know, the eye is the human eye and the human brain is naturally drawn toward beings of beauty, you know, saying images of beauty. So therefore, you get those um, who don't have to do that. They're not noticed. Hell, and I'm very, very, very sure that there are some uh, who are streaming women of color especially who have to talk about topics of sex and things in order to appeal to people and have people want to watch because it draws them in and keeps them attentive you know the the ultimate rule is something that hasn't been trumped yet in humanity which is just that sex sales man okay that's just plain and simple and whether it's you know whether it's you know something for like you know gender bent or you know saying or or soft core you know suggestive content then that's just what's gonna work i'm sorry but it's just been true since the dawn of media the dawn of time and i feel like there's some people that can get overlooked you know because it's such because when there's it's not them being overlooked saying uh they're not gonna gain an audience because of these pretty people over here what i'm getting at is you have a wider pool of demographic of people that are coming to this site this platform for different reasons and i feel like it's gonna justify them um being more of a, a oh if i donate this amount of money i can get them to bounce up and down or reach real high to write on a whiteboard or stuff like that and that's what makes people be more you know what I'm saying a, a, of an asshole to other women on the platform that may be about their they're all about their you know their game that they're playing or the personality they have or maybe they're about comedy she might be a woman of good comedy chops and her conversation is the entertainment that draws people in you know things like that those who other things in the market are trying to be sustained but when sex is the question no it's it's there's a reason why back in the day at e3 they had booth babes at these gaming conventions and women who had who were well endowed or had a certain figure would stand next to the booth was it about the video games no but they drew people in because of these women who were beautiful and it had people come to their booths it's just the truth so it's like I'm not shaming them. I don't think that they should come off of the platform or whatnot because it's already in motion and you can't really fix it. But the ultimate truth of the matter is we have to be aware of this and speak about this. We have to have conversation in some type of form about it or else we forget about the women of color or even other minorities. You know what I mean? Um, whether it's women or the LGBT who are the outliers, the genuine people, those who deserve where who they are is more than enough and you would find a great community and it could be a community that you actually need you could find great friends within that community but you don't because maybe you're new to twitch you don't know much about it but you were told that it's all about a certain type of streams that you only you know peer into so it's just and and then there's the whole thing about the thing about the strength of the gaming culture and the geek culture is that it shows people that it's okay to be a part of the community you may find some fun in it there's some people who don't even know the joys of that. They'll probably be a huge fan of cosplay, but they haven't found a community of people that can get them into it. The greatest thing about gaming is that there were people who did not like gaming at one point, and they found solace in gaming when they saw just how strong the community of gamers through YouTube content creation and Twitch streams and etc. And it made them get into it because they saw how big of a community of people that were claymoring around something that they love and enjoy to together and it's a beautiful thing viral videos about the daigo moment that made people get into the fighting game community crazy uh, speed run clips of people playing super mario so fast to the point that it was so popular that it ended up on an episode of tosh.0 oh, talking about speed running you you got to understand that this community is healthy and it can do so much good for people who have suffered the things that we had to deal with before this community existed feeling you know saying you know like you don't know a place in this world but i don't think that being good and fair to those that want a piece of the pie is worth tarnishing an environment that I feel like a group of people desperately need for their growth. That's how I feel about it. So no, 
I don't think it's something inherently wrong with certain type of streamers out there, but I feel like it's something even worse if we just sit up and act like or pretend that they don't have an impact. All right, that was the best way I can put it into words. I've been racking my brain on that all night since we talked about it and all yesterday. So I hope what I said made enough sense to you all because there are people around me that I have, you know, gotten to know and connected with and they've been some of the best people I've met and some of the best friends I've made were the ones that are genuine and outside of the clout chase, outside of the ass kiss, outside of the play nice and get along. And they're great people. And once you become accustomed to being a part of that, well, guess what? You become that. And it's 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 a great thing to be, you know, to keep genuine people around you because that keeps you genuine. And before you, and and it's 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 a lot in and to unpack into that, but I feel like you, there's way more to gain. When I found the geek culture on the internet, it kept me. I was no longer motivated to feel like I want to belong with stupid shit on the street. I knew a guy when I was in college. He used to be locked up. He had all type of problems priors all type of charges he caught and everything he was just terrible he was in juvenile uh you know saying uh, uh, um you know uh, uh special schooling because of his uh, behavior all type of stuff and he discovered world of warcraft that boy ain't been in jail since he started playing that shit and 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 it's it's a fact i've seen video games actually change and save people's lives so i know the impact that it could have there's nothing worse. The biggest problem when it comes to people in poverty, especially, is having idle hands. When you don't have a hobby or some type of passion that you can chase down a drive or something to put your energy toward, then someone else takes advantage and uses it and you end up putting it towards someone else's cause. And oftentimes, that will be you ending up in something that's not really you. You're someone else's soldier. You're someone else's, you know, saying, uh, 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 um, lesser than lower rank and you end up just adding to someone else's cause but when you find a part of you that you appreciate something that you like about yourself then you can support someone that can pour more into you because you are part of that community and it grows from there and i like that so i feel like the i feel like we need to care about our culture those who are a part of the not you know saying it's nothing wrong if you've just gotten to the geek culture fine you've always been welcome we've never really gate kept but once it's starting to be changed by people who aren't really in the culture that's when we have an issue so i said all of that because it's something that really impacted me and i really do appreciate the fact that i found it or else i probably would have been a complete i know no no probably about it i know i would have been a completely different person if I did not find my gaming and my nerd culture, it's an important thing to have. And I need to see more minorities celebrated for their intelligence and their passions and their artistic abilities rather than their looks and their sports skills. All right. So anyway, what happened right here with Twitch is that there's a bunch of new people that came in on under the employment for Twitch and they're not really in positions of power or even moved up on the ladder, but they're beckoning for change within the company. And I understand both sides of this because you have new people coming in that want them to be more responsible with how they use the platform. And yet you have veteran people who've been twitch for the longest and they know that twitch is not just gaming anymore they know that it's evolved so they're trying to deal with it and, and roll with those punches because once things change it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to change for the bad and you can't accept the new and we can have this new twitch all right there is room for this new twitch but don't change it without the context of what we're changing from. Remember its roots. Make sure that we stick there. It should be a secondary thing and not the main thing. You know what I mean? This, this new parts of Twitch should not be the main overriding thing. And we can help by making it healthy by just not making it the whole narrative. Stop bringing so much attention with your negativity about these said types of streamers. And then it'll be good. Let them make their money in peace. Shut up. Stop 
bringing it attention and you'll stop advertising it everywhere. The best attention and advertisement that OnlyFans creators had was when everybody was hating on OnlyFans during that whole meme when it was like this girl just bought a hundred thousand dollar house and she's only 18 through OnlyFans. And that stuff was getting around and people retweeting and hating left and right. And it's like, yo, 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 that's the reason why this stuff is blowing up so big. Because y'all are spreading it with the hate. Calm down. Let them make their money in peace. Whoever comes to them and is going to spend their money on them, they decided to do that. They're not going to stop and watch a Final Fantasy speed run. We've said this several times. So, yes, let that be that. That's all I'm saying. Keep the conversation about gaming and it will stay about gaming because that's the part that's the heart of it that's the part that matters the most about this platform because it's what built the platform and made it what it is and it's gaming that separates twitch from being chatterbait so you know immediately once it becomes that the whole image of the business is raunchy and ugly we don't want that it needs to look somewhat sleek clean and cutting edge and of the modern era let it let twitch be the original twitch primarily that don't mean it ain't room for new other types of content but you, you can't just broaden it out like that like crazy youtube is accepted because youtube started that way it had everything its whole market was just it's the people making content in general all right and everything else that came after was fcc regulated type of shit you know what i mean where they could do business but they got to do it within the means of uh reasonability so just understand just just understand that there is a solution for both sides but both sides got to listen and want that solution but if both sides are fighting for complete control then you're just going to end up ruining the whole platform altogether so I guess I'm saying everybody shut the fuck up. Next thing on the docket is the Cuphead show has already been renewed for a second season. It's a um, classic, um, I guess you could say Hanna-Barbera slash Fred Quimby era of animation combined with modern day, uh, well, excuse me, art style combined with modern day animation, excuse me. But uh, it looks good, runs well, it's got a great cast of uh, voice actors and I love, love, love the game a lot there was some rng bullshit really did piss me off but i need to watch this show because it looks like a decent cartoon and I'll, I'll be willing to dive into it so yeah there's already a season two coming in this is the article over on the ign.com if you want to check it out studio mdhr um basically they hit something then it's hit big and i feel like cuphead could be a lot and they could keep going Next thing on the docket and last thing, unfortunately, GameInformer.com. John Romero releases new Doom 2 level to raise money for Ukraine. Whereas um, with everything that's been going on, I think I mentioned this in passing earlier at the top of the podcast. But yes, um, basically John Romero is, uh, actually came out of retirement on development and decided, yo, I'm going to make a Doom 2 level. And it's sick. And this is the guy who's like the father of all fps's and that's pretty damn dope and i like it like just have some fun with it it's it's great i can't i we do have a doom anthology planned for the future and i and i do apologize if it hadn't happened immediately but everybody knows that i get down to it eventually i have an entire list laid out so the moment we get to it and get it off the backlog, the better. Anywho's, yes. So let me throw you a quote real quick. One humanity is a new level from the 1994 id software release release of Doom 2 created by John Romero to support the people of Ukraine and the humanitarian efforts of the Red Cross and the UN Central Emergency Response Fund. Romero writes on his website, um, and he said that 100% of the proceeds will go toward these supportive initiatives. One Humanity is Romero's first Doom 2 level since the release of the original 1994. The WAD contains a README text file as well as the external mod data. Players must have an original copy of Doom 2 and a modern source port to play One Humanity. So there you have it. Um, this must be some type of big if John Romero is willing to like get back in the chair and make a Doom level. So. I, I say we, we can't really, like, this ain't nothing to sneeze at. And it make, it's making me pay attention even more. 
So yeah. That being said, that's everything on the docket. That's all the news, y'all. I wanted to go ahead. I didn't want to give you too short of a pot. So I went into detail with a better, more concise choice of words about uh, how I felt about a recent conversation we've had about things. And uh, that article brought it out of me. So yeah, I'm glad that I could actually get it off my chest because I try my best to refine my thoughts and distill them before I speak them. But that don't mean it's always going to be that way. I'm going to say some stupid shit because I like to have fun in life too. We ain't we all work and no play make, um, make shit terrible. I don't remember the quote, man. Leave me alone. So anyway, um, we finna move forward and uh, call it a pot. And I hope y'all will join us on Tuesday. Uh, possibly Tuesday evening, y'all. Because I want to watch me some Batman. And I don't know what time. I'm gonna have to check the uh, show times or screen times, but yeah, I'm, 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 I, I gotta go watch this Batman. All right, he's my favorite superhero. I gotta, I gotta be in there. I gotta be in there. I can't, I can't let him not know. So yeah, let's do this thing. And uh, let's sign on out. So don't forget, everybody, where to find us. You know what to do. If you are uh, over on the uh, Spotify or the Apple or Google Podcast listening, go ahead and check us out over on the YouTube. I'm going to make sure we upload a video this week. We did not do last week. It was a very tiresome last week. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. And uh, things was weird. But um, we back on, and uh, we're going to keep it kicking. So, yeah. Don't forget. Don't be, Don't forget. Um, we have some uh, things coming up this uh, week. You are gonna want to be there because we got some changes coming. Some some little beautiful things are coming in transit, and I can't wait. I can't wait. I was so excited. I can't wait. So, anyways, um, love, peace, and hair grease. Hug your nephew, love your niece, and always remember the channel motto, y'all. Intentions are the most important. Actually, another lot of words. I mean, the damn thing. Y'all take care of yourselves. And peace. Hey, no horse. Oh, this looks so fucking stupid. It's awesome. Ah, oh, shit. Hey, we riding high. Don't give a fuck. We turning up. Show you what's up. If you want me. You got... <laughs> what the fuck? Bro! Okay, they gotta fix this bug. They gotta fix this. So much damage, man. I was on your ass. Bro, what this man about, bro? What is all this shit? Man, somebody explain it to me.